Hey, hello. Uh, today we are going to paint this still life of veggies and fruit. Um, as you can see, I have my uh, drawing mapped out. I went a little darker on my drawing. I used a 2B pencil. Right now I'm adding um, some cerulean blue and ultramarine blue to the backdrop. Um, actually, the whole, yeah, the whole thing you, if you um, look in the, the picture, um, you'll see that the whole shadow area was a, was a, a cer almost a cerulean blue. What was happening in that photograph, uh, the still life was set up on my dining room table, and there was a window that was uh, just casting a, a strong light effect on the, on the, on the ve vegetables and fruit. So... Um, it was on a white tablecloth, so everything was blue. So here I'm adding more cerulean, um, and I'm picking up some of the color. Uh, be careful with this, too, because um, we want to work wet into wet. This is actually going to be uh, the whole under, let's say the underwash, right, is going to be all wet into wet. I am not going to do... Um, a lot of layering. You'll see that uh, I'll go right in, try to get some idea of form. I'm not really concerned too much with the lights and the darks, really just the average colors here. So this way we can see that uh, there's the apple, there's a reflection, actually not so much a reflection, but well, I guess you could call it a reflection of color on the, on the surface, um, because that light was so bright it was sort of bouncing back onto the onto the top of the uh, tabletop um, on the tablecloth, so you can actually see it's kind of bleeding in, and you kind of want that in a watercolor. You want to, you know, you want to actually encourage that uh, blending and the colors kind of shifting and bleeding into the background. Uh, it always makes for an interesting uh, composition or just a technique. Um, I should say, um, and it does help out the composition too. So here we're working on the um, the the uh, I guess yeah the uh, cabbage, <laughs> excuse me, um, and uh, just basically that was a purple. Um, it was a dioxine purple with alizarin crimson because there seemed to be more red in the sunlight. So you can. If you guys want to go a little bit more more intense and chromatic um, on some of these vegetables, definitely do it at this stage. Meaning, if you want your peppers to be really bright yellow, um, use as much intense yellow as possible. Use your cadmiums, your Hansa yellow, whatever yellow you have. Um, use it to full chroma, meaning you're not going to wash it out a little bit with too many extra washes. So here you can almost see that this whole painting, the underpainting, almost looks like everything is like in a fog, like everything is out of focus. This is exactly what you want in painting. Um, you want to have something where your all the colors are kind of mixing together. Now here it is dry. You can see how light it gets. And now I'm going into each, um, well, this is the fruit, the watermelon. Um, and I'm going to try to get a little shape. Uh, I still want to have my light effect. And I want to also have my darks in there. And, you know, it's still actually, it's, this is, the surface is still wet. Um, I may have, I think I did actually wash this. Um, uh, or it was just my wet wash over the dry surface. It's probably more of what happened there. Um, I wanted to get some striations in the watermelon as much as I could, just to make it look like a watermelon without without doing too much. Um, my concept of uh, of painting and, and watercolors, trying to get the you know the watercolor effects to create some of the texture. Um, I'm just helping the water along in certain places. Um, with this technique, it's uh, it's more of 
what the water is going to do. So I'm not really concerned about making the perfect, well, as I'm painting the pepper now, making the per, per <laughs> that's a tongue twister, making the perfect pepper. I don't really mind, I don't really mind if some of the, you know, the half tones bleed into the shadow shapes. Um, in fact, I want that. I want it to look spontaneous and free. So, but having that underpainting actually allows me to go a little freer because it's covering what that second wash that we're doing now uh, is going over the first wash. And that first wash is sort of dictating the average tone of that fruit. So, or that vegetable in this case. Um, so you can see that I'm not, I don't have to do a lot um, of rendering to achieve the roundness or the drawing of the fruit. Um, a few lines of light and dark will indicate all you need, really. Um, you want to try to keep your still life harmonious, too. So by doing this, yes, we are painting um, one, one fruit at a time, yes. But because we had that underpainting, that was sort of like we created a template. So if you think of it like that, uh, your still life already now has uh, continuity. The shapes are together, right? We already see in that fogged out underwash that everything is working out. So, meaning the composition is solid, right? All we're doing is adding just a bit of, um, of, of detail, really. We're just finishing off some of the um some of the shapes there and here i'm trying to find some darker areas uh as you can see in the shadows if you look at the inset photo you will see slight color changes in the um in the shadow so you want to be aware of those um that's going to actually help um, open up the shadows, give the shadows some translucency. Um, it's important to try to get some color wherever you can. And um, while, the, while those shadow washes are wet, um, that's the prime time to add a little bit of um, a secondary color. In this case, it's the color of the, uh, let's say in this case, the pepper. Um, is sort of reflecting on the white surface. So um, that's why it's really good to use white as a sort of like a tablecloth or just a, a support um, for painting fruit because it always um, sort of the colors always reflect onto white, which is great because white in itself um, has a lot of color. White isn't just white, obviously. We, you know, to make uh, our shadow color, we needed to use cerulean blue and ultramarine blue. Um, so um, that's how we get white in the shadow. And even the white that's in, in the light isn't really 100% white. There's always a little bit of value, um, or at least there is on this painting. Um, all right, so we're working on the squash. Um, trying to take my time to get those um those fluted shapes this um it has sort of like a uneven texture uh, and sometimes that could be a little tricky because you have to round out each edge but yet keep keep it looking spontaneous so really just try to look for the big shadow shapes and as you can see right now um basically that's what i did um we already had the under uh, painting or the underwash, I should say, and uh, now we're just working on trying to um, solidify the form, give it a little bit more depth. Um, and when I say detail, I'm, uh, I should I should preface by saying we don't want to go too detailed on all of the, um, the the fruit and the vegetables here. We want to indicate. And I often, uh, I oftentimes say to my class, uh, try to indicate rather than illustrate. Um, unless, you know, if, if that's a style that you want to develop into, 
by all means, um, take your time, make your washes more transparent and, and, and many more of them. Uh, because to work in that in that way, um, you have to really take your time and build up as if an oil painter would work in a glazes. Um, and you can achieve like almost photographic realism that way. Um, my style is more free and spontaneous. I like to finish a painting in one sitting. Um, this painting probably took me I would say maybe 90 minutes, maybe a little more. Um, obviously, this is cut time. It's, um, as you can see by how fast everything is moving, uh, I think this is like four times speed. So, um, yeah, so I'm trying to get in some dark shapes. Um, in the cabbage, a lot of that the purple color. Uh, maybe I just didn't have the color. Maybe it's not looking as purple in in the video, but that's a tough color. If you guys have some kind of bright purple, use it. I use the Lizard and Crimson and uh, Dioxide Purple um, to create that color. And I think just to get it a little darker blue in the shadows, I added a little bit uh, of straight ultramarine blue. Uh, I felt that coupled with the alizarin crimson gave me a deeper, a deeper purple. Now what I'm doing here is I'm putting in. Um, it, it looks very abrupt, right? That is that does have a little bit of white to it, but I know that when that dries, because what I'm trying to achieve there is a little reflective light from the blue of the tablecloth or the blue shadow, and I'm trying to just get a little bit more. Um, uh, color bouncing back, reflective color bouncing back into um, the fruit. And here I'm just working on the stem of the pepper. Um, notice I'm not really um, nitpicking about uh, the details. I'm really trying to get the contrast of the light and dark. Um, keep that in mind as you're painting. Um, don't feel that you have to get every little nook and cranny and nuance. Go for the big, obvious shapes first. Um, that is very important in watercolor because you can't, or you just, you don't want to belabor um, the forms. Um, again, like I said earlier, you know, if you have, unless you want to work in that style. Um, Try to keep things, indicate the, the form, indicate the, the detail um, sparingly, too. Uh, too much detail would laden a watercolor down, make it look overworked. Um, and you want to try to avoid that, at least in this style of, of painting. Um, now, is this like Sumi painting? Not really. But it's, um, you know, because they would have done everything in just basically one stroke. Here we're trying to use, we're trying to economize our washes. So that first wash that we did earlier, the one that we can still see in the apples and now parts of the uh, carrots, you can see that there's, you can see the form, it's there, it's not, you know, it doesn't have the depth that it needs, but it has a good foundation, right? And that's what I was saying earlier. Try to get that. Try to get those big shapes to connect. Another thing, too, is really important. Um, this shadow would have been harder for me to do um, wet into wet because it would have bled. And it already did bleed into the carrot shape. So I had to come back in here. Uh, try to, uh, as you're doing, working on this, try to get... Um, Try to get that blue to look close to what we have in the shadows. So just underneath the squash, uh, I kind of use that blue that I use there just to tie everything in. And now more color than I'm seeing. And I'm wetting some areas down that, that that actually was, at that point, was dry. So what I do is I put a little color down and then I add just water to my brush and 
paint around the color I put down. And what that does is it just, it creates like this, it just opens the floodgates for that color to just move into the shadow shape. So you don't have to always work wet into wet. Um, what I like to do in some areas, I like to spot wet, um, let's say a shadow shape, because then I can go back into that shadow shape and wherever I painted a little white, I'm sorry, painted a little water or put down a little water, whatever I put down, I know that it's going to stay within that area. So that's another thing that can be very important when we do watercolor. Because sometimes we feel that, um, oh, our watercolors look a little choppy. They don't have fluidity. Um, well, this will make your uh, work look a little bit more fluid. And um, because what it does is it just merges the shadow colors together, just like I did here in the shadows around the carrots. Now I'm trying to get some deep shadow because I want that carrot to pop out. Now unfortunately the carrot on top uh, got a little too blue and because I didn't use and I don't normally use masking fluid um, if you guys feel like you need to use that um, I'm not a big fan of it but I'm not knocking it. Uh, you can always put a little bit on the um, on the carrots because the carrot and probably the maybe the, the top of the pepper and some of the highlights like the highlight on the cabbage if you don't want to you know be careful to draw around it or paint around it you can also uh, mask use masking fluid um, now I'm just getting some more detail and shadow shapes in the the shadow part of the carrot. Now there was a carrot um, and one of my students when I first did this demonstration uh, she said what's that that looks like a mistake and and you know what uh, in hindsight I think she's right um, and I'm talking about the top two carrots is like a bit of orange or like a dark burnt sienna color just to the left of that. That is a carrot underneath and I just didn't quite get the shape. Um, so if you guys want to paint, just, you know, like, actually extend the white into that area, um, you could do that. If not, leave it, try to make it, you know, look more like the carrot. I think I put some more form on it later on. I do go back to the carrot shapes um, and do a little bit more. But what I want to try to do is, again, keeping the big picture always in mind that big picture is what we did originally the first wash right that gave us our entire um, still life um, in one wash okay now was it fully valued no but it gave us the the bleeding of the washes the you know wet into wet I could have probably exaggerated that a little bit more if I wanted to. Um, I wanted to still keep it unified and I wanted areas not to bleed. So this is where um, even though the, the water itself is going to do what it's going to do, uh, we can also kind of control that too. We can, we can you know, we can pull away um, when a wash gets out of control. You know, we can dab it with our paper towels or rag or whatever you use um, and we can manipulate the washes if they start to get so meaning if the if the wash starts to uh, bleed in places you don't want it to bleed and while it's wet you can always stop that right um, a lot of oftentimes the uh, some student like the beginner students they you know they, they panic and they're like oh no like, I ruined my painting I'm like no you didn't ruin the painting as long as the painting's wet uh, you didn't ruin it. You can always lift that up. If it dries that way, uh, well, yeah, it, then you'll have some problems. But um, usually, you can you could alter certain things, and you can lighten. Like I do, I do some scrubbing, um, and uh, you know, it, whatever whatever it takes to get the effect. Um, just don't scrub too hard. Make sure you use good paper. Um, I just happened to use the arches. This this was actually the arches, um, three hundred uh, cold press or the rough the rough stuff. Um, 
So, and I like this because I put a lot of washes down and that's why I used the 300 because my underpainting was sopping wet throughout the whole process. So if I, if I were to use 140, not that you can't, um, it would be fine. I just didn't want any puddling and, um, uh, you know, because that's what happens sometimes when, when paper is oversaturated. What you can do to eliminate that is to wet the back of your paper and then put it on. So if it comes in a block form, take it out, put it on, you know, uh, water the back with just some spray or a brush and then water the front. And usually it'll lay down pretty well. Um, however, I like to paint directly on the block. So... But in this case, I didn't really need to because the 300 pa the 300 pound paper was was uh, stiff enough to not buckle. All right, so we're back to the carrots. We're adding more shadows now. I really want to get that light effect, and here I'm addressing that little carrot that's in the shadow. Um, and I think if I if I had painted the top, it might have gotten uh, maybe it would have read a little bit better, but. It is what it is, and we're going to move on. Um, more shadows to the carrot tops, um, or at least the shadow side. Um, I'm using a, a couple of colors. I'm using Burnt Sienna, um, Cadmium Red, and um, a little Cadmium Orange, too, in the mix. Now I'm just trying to get a few little... Um, I'm just trying to get a little bit of uh, shadow shape. I'm trying to get some shapes to the uh, carrots. Um, here, okay, so there was a little, I guess I switched over there. And yeah, so now we have some little half tones. You know, you want to show that too. You want to show, like, on the carrot in the middle there. Um, we had a little half tone, keeping that one little area of light just. To help us see the form round out. Now we're, I think, at the last apple, and we're coming close to the end. And uh, yeah, just trying to shape it up. I think I put a little bit of a, a greenish color into that shadow. And while that's all wet now, I just leave it there, and I don't do much more to it. Again, less is more. Um, Try to, you know, I know your mind is telling you, oh, there's way more form in there. I see more detail. I see more, I don't know, striations to the apple. But try to keep yourself from overdoing it, you know. Um, I heard it said, I don't know where it was, but uh, usually painting is a two-man operation. Um, one person to do the painting and another person to drag you away. So um, a lot of that holds true because sometimes we feel like we, we're obligated to paint every little detail. Well, you're really not. You make, remember, you're making an artistic statement. So you can embellish and you can improvise. Um, here we're improvising at least technique uh, but we're still staying true to nature. You know, we still have solidity. We still have form. I mean, this is a realistic uh, painting. Uh, it might not be photorealistic, but I think we have a lot of feel a good feeling of light. And that's what I chose. Well, there, I, I just wanted to show you this thing. Um, I, I have my little scrubber brush, and I'm going around. And I feel i got to get the ribs on that squash to really um, come out. Now, you see, just by... By giving that a little scrub, I'm back to I'm back to the color I want, and it still is going to look spontaneous, right? Um, when you're working in this fashion, sometimes accidents happen. Washes go where they're not supposed to go, and you just need to do a little something to uh, revitalize all that. So that's what I did here, and um, as you can see, there's more. Um, more color. Actually, now I'm I'm putting in orange and yellow 
um, to those those shadow colors. I want I want those shadows to beam, right? Because it is it was a bright morning. Um, the setup was on my dining room table, and because here in the Northeast it is um, it's early spring. And the trees aren't fully covered, so I get the streaming light in at this time of year. Um, in the winter, it doesn't angle the same way. So whenever I get that, those months in April and early May, I try to uh, set up some still lifes in this in my dining room because the light is amazing, especially for watercolor. You know, you want high contrast, you want sunshine. Um, you want your, you know, this is probably one of the best um, things to paint. Um, this atmospheric effect, you know, bright light, deep shadows. Um, I feel, I don't know, uh, but uh, I do like that contrast. Now here I'm dropping in some more shadows, um, just trying to get a little bit more life in the shadows by adding some orange tones just around the accents of the apples. Um, again, to tie in their color to the background color, all right? Um, here I'm embellishing a little bit more shadow shape um, just underneath the, the purple cabbage and drawing it all off. Um, as you can see there, I'm using a uh, silver black velvet brush, which I love. I think they're really good brushes. They're, they're a mixture of synthetic and um, squirrel hair and they really do hold a lot of paint um, a lot of water and here's the final painting and thanks for watching and don't forget to please like and subscribe